Classic Game Room is brought to you by Magnum Skywolf. CGR is supported by fans on Patreon. Thank you. Welcome to Classic Game Room for the review of Radar Lock on the Atari 2600. And uh, hey, Ben, good job trying to fix the uh, marks on the cartridge there with a the red marker. It looks good. See that? You can barely tell. That armor's not too strong for blasters, it's just right. Radar Lock for the Atari 2600 from 1989 is a game where you'll do the dance of safety in the zone of danger. Remember kids, you need two controllers to play this game on your Atari 2600. Preferably one Sega Genesis controller and one Atari 2600 controller. Dueling fanboys here. That's right, because you'll be switching weapons to fight various enemies in this Atari 2600 flight game, which would have been pretty good had somebody developed an Atari controller with two buttons. For starters, you've got to admit that Radar Lock looks good. It looks great, in fact. Definitely one of the best looking Atari 2600 flight games out there, but like a lot of Atari games, a lot of games on the 2600 that pushed the envelope, the fun and gameplay suffers because of it. Once they go to that two controller layout, you know you're in trouble. Because they needed more, but they didn't have it. You really won't need the second controller until the second or third level. At some point, you'll have to switch your weapons to missiles, which lock onto enemy targets. Hence the title of the game, Radar Lock. And that means awkwardly reaching over to the second controller and switching weapons while still trying to fly and machine gun things at the same time. It, it just doesn't work well. Using two controllers, this is awkward. Yeah! Uh, this is my aircraft here. Wait, no. Anyone see a UFO around here? I haven't found any way to combine two Atari controllers or two Sega controllers or a Sega and an Atari controller in any fashion to make this control scheme work well. It's super frustrating. And that's a shame because the game isn't too bad otherwise. It's archaic. They're trying to do a lot here on the Atari 2600, so from that standpoint, it's impressive. But this is 1989. You could have also just bought an NES and played Top Gun, which is way better. Basically, you just fly through missions and shoot enemy targets. There's a simulated radar on the bottom right. The guns are your main weapon, you have missiles, and you lock on enemy targets using the radar screen in the bottom center, launch your missiles, and usually get destroyed in the process. I have to compliment the game's art style. I like the design of the ship and the enemies, but it's tough to play this game now and not think constantly, why am I not playing Top Gun? You can sing Footloose while you're playing this, but that doesn't change the fact that Kenny Loggins has nothing to do with Radar Lock. Ah, the Wiimote is easier to use than this thing. I'm pretty sure that even the great Kenny Loggins would be disappointed with the control scheme here, but I do love the art design. The flying triangle is very cool. And there's a refueling sequence where one flying triangle refills the other one, which is far less complicated than the Top Gun refueling and landing sequence. The color palette is nice, and beyond the awkward two controller scheme, the flight controls are pretty good for an Atari 2600 game. So Radar Lock is not without its merits, it's just hard to look past the simple fact it could have just used two buttons. Maybe this should have been on the 7800. Maybe it is, actually I didn't check. Nope, nope, sorry, this is not on the 7800. Great box art though, check online. This one looks really cool. I love the red boxes from Atari. Watch out for the enemy missiles. They'll hit you before you know they're there. I found it helps if you keep turning in one direction. Then you don't accidentally fly straight into them. 
Also, you'll use the second controller button to accelerate, which increases the awkwardness. Regardless, it's still a very cool and impressive game for your Atari 2600. And I have a classic game room shout out and thank you going all the way to my man Ben from Buffalo, New York. Thank you again, Ben. I've never played this one before. It's pretty neat. Personally, I'll stick with something like Top Gun on the NES or Sky Destroyer for the Famicom. But if you want to play a game that pushes the limits of the Atari 2600, check out this one. Radar Lock. You know what that thing reminds me of is the spaceship from Flight of the Navigator. I haven't seen that in years. And now I never will. No! Thank you for watching. Follow Classic Game Room on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Patreon. Don't miss Magnum Skywolf, also on Patreon. Welcome to the club. It's the Lord Carnage Club, where I celebrate these backers on Patreon by shouting their name in a volcano. Introducing Michael Fernandez. Oh, yeah! Michael Nelson! Lord Carnage approves. Jim. Moriarty! Sergio Matthias! Hergert! Jason from Kamloops! British Columbia! Busy! Busy. Busy. Signal! Signal! Signal. Al Cyber! Sean Zoltek. <laughs> I'm just kidding again! Sean Zoltek! Stephen Chucknick from New Jersey! Landon Ellerby! He's the administrator of these credits. Philip Straubenmuller of Vienna, Austria! Woo! Jack Stavris from Australia! Home of Mad Max! Ohad Kane! Cue the Thunder! Jeff Captain Dauntless Briar! Rick DeBarros! Out of sight! Will, 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 Will. Kid Shuruken! Fatality! Chip Sink Bale! That was too evil, wasn't it? Let's try that again. Chip Sink Bale! See you next time on Classic Game Room. Thanks for watching.